1992 may well be the year of Europe, but above all, it has to be the year of Spain. No country has so enthusiastically embraced the opportunities the new Europe has to offer, and none is putting on such a show. The Seville Expo, Madrid's stint as Europe's cultural capital, celebrations marking the 500th anniversary of Columbus's American voyage, and of course, the Barcelona Olympics. Continuing our Europe 92 series, we go to Barcelona at the hub of Spain's richest region. It's not only one of the great European cities, but lately it's emerged as the continent's design capital, a title held variously in the past by Milan, Berlin, Paris and even Edinburgh. Tony Manatti reports. <laughs> This year, if all goes well, Spain, a country centuries old, will come of age. Once the hub of its own far-reaching empire, and more recently a paternalistic dictatorship, Spain looks set to graduate this year as a fully-fledged modern European nation. That's no surprise to Barcelona, a city that's long realised where Spain should focus its energies and passions, not in the distant Americas or the remote Pacific, but a relative stone's throw away in Europe. Barcelona has always been cosmopolitan, European, international. Now it seems half the world is about to descend on it. When the Summer Olympics begin here in late July, an estimated three and a half billion people will watch the opening ceremony on television. For 16 days, 28 sports will be played at more than 40 venues around Barcelona. The games have already brought in big money, $5 billion of public funding alone, and big names in architecture. At the main site, high above the city, the Japanese master, Arata Isazaki, has planted his San Jordi sports palace. Some describe it as a giant black mushroom. Others imagine a plum lying on its side. It's already been used for sports events and a Pavarotti opera. It seats 17,000. Beneath a spider's web of steel, Isazaki has suspended a climate control system to beat Spain's intense summer heat. The main Olympic stadium is not entirely new. The facade is restored from Barcelona's 1929 exposition. The neoclassical look continues at the new Sports Institute, venue for that most ancient of Olympic Games, wrestling. Nothing Spanish here, the feel is entirely international, except for Barcelona's brilliant sunlight. Since the times of the ancient Greeks, the Olympic ideal has embraced not only competitive sport and athletics, but also a strong sense of architecture. In modern times, many cities have employed this Olympic opportunity to revitalize vast tracts of depressed urban land. In Barcelona, a crowded city with a long tradition of architecture, concerns are running the other way. Will the immense scale of these Olympic projects dwarf and even swamp the delicate balance of a city that's hundreds of years old? A Spanish philosopher once noted that his country had an absolute genius for art and absolutely no talent for economics. True or not, what applies to Spain often doesn't apply to Barcelona. Tucked between the mountains and the Mediterranean, Barcelona's been around since Roman times at least, and doing good business ever since. The capital of Catalonia, it currently produces about 20% of Spain's wealth. It also has the dubious honour of being Europe's most densely populated city, making architecture here a fairly exacting science. The blocks of the so-called New Town are divided by streets precisely 20 metres wide. But unlike the heavy architecture that dominates much of the rest of Spain, Barcelona's style is light, playful, and more than a little mad. Some say none was madder or more inspired than Catalonia's most famous architect, Antoni Gaudi, creator of Barcelona's still unfinished masterpiece, The Church of the Holy Family which Gaudi set to work on in 1891. Gaudi was neither crazy nor a visionary, but upholding the great tradition of Gothic engineering, coupled with a Catalan curiosity about the nature of materials.
concrete, iron and steel, ceramics. Gaudi, Salvador Dali, Miro, Pablo Picasso, all sons of Barcelona, where the avant-garde existed happily in a medieval city, and the absurd survived in a fascist state. At the Catalan Association of Architects, one of Picasso's unmistakable designs survives in concrete. Marta Hevelo, herself an architect and leading critic, has been tracking Catalonia's new wave, those who've sprung to prominence in the last decade. I think that a uh, very important uh, characteristic on the Catalan architecture is that it keeps architecture like an art. Probably uh, all the technology and the new uh, architectural movements are uh, coming into architecture like a business and we still have it like an art. If we were talking about the roots of Catalan, uh, we would say, and that's uh, nearly could be said uh, as a joke, we are told to have uh, brains and energy. <laughs> Barcelona isn't just drawing the big names in international architecture, it's sending out some of its own. In a world grown tired of look-alike postmodernism, they're the hottest around. So how does this tally with Spain's reputation for manana? I think that we were much more uh, thinking, not more that mañana, mañana, but thinking that if we have one day more, we'll do it better. So I think that uh, we, and you could go until, as far as in the whole future, doing it better and better. And you have to understand when you have to stop that change. When the Spanish Civil War broke out in 1936, Barcelona was already the stronghold of the Catalonian separatist movement and the Republicans' main centre of strength. The city was bombed and damaged and eventually fell to Franco's forces in 1939. For more than three decades, until Franco died in 1975, Spain remained isolated, cut off especially from Europe's post-war revival, spending much of the 50s and 60s in a political and economic time warp. In Barcelona, the Catalan independence movement was crushed the Catalan language forbidden. Since the restoration of democracy, both language and culture have thrived. In 1977, the region of Catalonia was granted limited autonomy, and today its flag flies proudly beside Spain's over the regional parliament. Not everyone's happy, though. Some are pushing for full Catalan independence, a separate state of Catalonia. There are fears they may push their aims with terrorist attacks during the Olympics, despite a massive security campaign. And outside the parliament, Catalan actors, film directors and performers are on strike, calling for more public funding of the arts, urging the socialist government not to close the door on Catalan culture. Down in Barcelona's well-stocked markets, Spain's newfound wealth is on show. But questions of European unity, not to mention the Olympics, have left many Catalonians confused about the short and long-term future. Bueno, tenemos miedo. <laughs> miedo por qué? Oh, porque no hayan cosas ni así. No hayan atentados ni hayan. Que no sé, habrá mucha gente. No me siento catalán, pero europeo 100%. Bueno, yo creo que aporta muchas incomodidades que hacen la ciudad muy cara y que también aportan que la ciudad sea más cosmopolita. Hombre, yo pues son las nuevas reos, pues, toda mi familia es catalana, aparte también va a vivir a Castellón. Toda mi familia, tanto la banda de mi amara como de ellos son catalanes. Y para mí es pues la real es la que cuenta. Pues catalán es, es como puede ser pues una nacionalidad que, que es una tierra entonces uno tiene que estar arraigado a la tierra entonces lo que pasa es que siempre hay que buscar la máxima expansión y Europa, primero Europa, después España y después Cataluña Some fear that going European will mean a loss of regional identity but in Catalan architecture just the opposite seems to be happening Enrique Morales runs a small practice in Barcelona's old quarter. His youthful team works on Catalan, Spanish and European projects. Lately, he's been landscaping a Japanese public garden. 
One word crops up again and again in Morales' rather colourful English. Not design or the avant-garde, but craftsmanship. The art of architecture is here the art of building. Asking the artisan or the people who does it, do it well, knowing that they exist, and, and if they need time, they, they do it, and maybe if they ask a bit of money, we find a way of, of giving it to them. So, but it's still this kind of not cut in between the builder and the architect, but this kind of, of relation, pushing it and changing it if necessary. I'm talking about the small things, but, but quite, quite important during a process. In the hills just north of the city, Enrique Morales and Kame Pinos have designed an offbeat archery centre for the Olympics. This section, the training range, harks back to Catalonia's medieval past. Inside, it's a fort, a clay and concrete labyrinth where competing archers will prepare for battle. When the games are over, it becomes a football club. The project has already received critical praise. But for the past few days, Enric Morales hasn't been entirely happy. Nothing serious, Morales thinks he's made the tongues of the armour-like drain pipes too long. Worse, he thinks they're too uniform. With his builder in tow, he makes an executive decision. Spain has traditionally been a conservative society locked into its Iberian traditions, cut off from the rest of Europe's political and economic trends. That's rapidly changing. But in Barcelona, what remains is a touch of anarchy. Even as it heads the charge into a unified Europe, the capital of Catalonia is bent on preserving its non-conformist nature. Tony Manetti in Barcelona. Tomorrow night our Europe 92 series continues with a profile of one of Italy's success stories, Silvio Berlusconi, who's moved from real estate development to controlling one of the most important communications empires on the continent. For all Silvio Berlusconi's hard work, there have been rewards. Nine houses throughout the world, his main one just outside Milan. 75 rooms that includes a steel reinforced office and living quarters in the case of terrorist attack. A swimming pool and spa switched into the action. And an extraordinary chapel with cathedral music at the flick of a switch. Now to today's events in the world of business and finance.